My name is Officer Madigan. I work with the Longmont Police Department, and my canine partner's name is Andor. Um, I joke a lot. It's spelled A-N-D-O-R, but I, usually when I say his name, people are like, what's his name? And, you know, they, they'll get it wrong. And, um, and so I, I always tell them, oh, it's like and slash or. It's considered bad luck to rename him. You know, people still do it and stuff, but um, it, it's actually, you know, fit his personality. He's a pretty unique dog. Andor, he's a, he's a Belgian Malinois. Um, and he's five years old. He's originally from Holland. Um, and we actually bought him in Indiana, Denver, Indiana. And he's, he's a goofball. I mean, that's probably the best way to put it. spend more time with him than I do anybody else because he's a working dog. So I spend more time with him than my wife, than, um, than I do with my kids. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty incredible bond. I mean, especially the Belgian Malinois breed, they really just want to please. It's a great reason why they make good police dogs and military dogs, is they really just want to please the handler. I've been a canine officer for about four years, a little over four years, and I always wanted to um, do something outside when I was a kid, so either military or police, and from an early age I was always around dogs. Um, and we always had dogs and just, just loved it, so it was always something that I wanted to do. So that makes it fun, but yeah, I, I enjoy it a lot. I'm a lot of variety, um, and you get really close with the, um, your canine. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really good experience. And we're still getting to know each other. You know, he's still figuring me out. I'm still figuring him out. Um, and you have good days and you have bad days, just like any relationship. You know, we probably test each other's limits, at, you know, at times, and we get on each other's nerves. But um, working patrol with him, working patrol with the, the working canine is much more enjoyable than doing it alone. <laughs> He loves working. It's like his favorite thing to do, but probably almost equally um, as enjoyable for him is just the home life. He loves just being a dog. And... So he'll actually let my son do this. My 40 year old boy is pretty funny. And he, you know, he's actually pretty gentle with him. He's part of the family. He doesn't supersede the wife or the kids, but he's the next one. The first year with your new canine, um, you really have to work almost every day, you know, if not every day. But it's a great job. You know, all that said, um, it's a terrific job. It's a really good experience. But, you know, there's some sacrifices involved in it as well. So sacrifices would probably start with time. So there's just a lot of training. Um, and a lot of it you've got to do outside the normal 40 hour work week. But you've got a dog that needs um, upkeep, um, maintenance and training. And you know, you're responsible for the dog 24 seven. So if you go on vacation with the family somewhere, you've got to find a place for the canine to go. You know, they have health issues that come up, and so there's a lot of trips to the vet hospital um, outside, uh, you know, the normal work schedule. Part of my job is protecting him. The dogs have to certify every year um, on all three disciplines. Their disciplines are um, patrol work, um, narcotics detection, and tracking their greatest utility is telling us that, hey, I've been trained to detect this odor and here it is, even though you can't see it, um, you wouldn't think that it's here, here it is. And 
Um, the same goes for um, you know, finding, locating seriously dangerous people. Um, we're keeping the dog out in front um, and we're letting the dog locate that person. And that's, the, that's their greatest tool. Um, it's not biting people, it's not apprehending people, it's actually locating them. Um, if somebody gets bitten by a police dog, it's because they, they didn't comply with commands. Um, I think it's amazing that this day and age, um, still the best tool to find narcotics, to find somebody that's fleeing from a, a scene, um, is not some computer, it's not some technological marvel or something like that. It's still this dog, you know, this canine um, that uses this incredible sense of smell. Dogs use their nose like humans use our eyesight. They rely on it so heavily. Um, their eyesight is pretty good from what I've heard, but their sense of smell far, you know, exceeds any other um, sense that they have. Oh, that's a good boy! That's a good boy! The two probably biggest advantages of the canines versus other, like, less than lethal um, tools are that we can recall them, meaning that if we send them on somebody that's, say, 50 or 100 yards away, um, we can give them a command to come back, and no other less than lethal tool has that capability. For instance, um, like a beanbag shotgun or a taser um, or a baton round or something like that, once you pull the trigger, that thing's going downrange towards the target. The second thing is that um, they can't be used against the officer. So a lot of officers have been killed um, when they're disarmed. You know, theoretically, you could take a taser from an officer or a beanbag shotgun or something like that. Um, nobody's going to take Andor from me and send him on me. It's just not going to work. Okay. Okay. But yeah, Andor's commands are in Dutch. There's some logic behind it. Most people in the United States don't know Dutch. Um, and uh, it just avoids that possibility of a suspect who's being apprehended from using a command to tell the dog to release or get off of And or it, probably about three quarters of his commands are in Dutch. Uh, some examples um, of Dutch are like a blive is stay. Come to the, the sit heel position, like next to me on my left side is uh, plots. But I mean, you can train a dog to do anything on command and for instance, you could train them to sit when you say butterfly. Seventeen thirty-three. These dogs will literally, they work themselves to death if you let them. Um, they're just that driven for the reward. And if something happened to him, um, some illness came about or something like that. Yeah, it'd be really hard. Andor's worked a little over four years, and he's probably got that much more left in him. So he'll probably work until, you know, another four <laughs> years till he's eight. We like to be able to retire him out so they've got a, a year or two at home where they can just relax. So he'll go to me. Um, so the city will sell them. Usually, if they've worked like a whole career, they'll just sell them to the handler for a dollar, you know, just like a token. Um, sign them over to, to you and stuff. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever been more passionate about a job within the police department than I have with this. Yeah, it's definitely a dream job. It's something I'll remember whether I um, get a second canine or I retire out of the internet after Andor. It's a dream job. I mean, there's a lot of people that meet us on the street and they're just like, oh, you're so lucky. You get to have your you know, dog, your canine as your partner and with them all the time. Um, there's a lot of people that would like to go to work and have their dog by their side, you know, either at their desk or if they, if they work outside. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I feel very fortunate.